Everybody is saying, again after both acha drama. Then suddenly in Hindi asked me, acha both acha drama. Kon kia? Who did the drama? So I'm saying, ha, Swami, Balvikas, gurus from Bombay, children from Bombay. Acha acha, very good. Both acha drama. Second time he asked me, kon drama kia? So again I'm saying, Swami, all Balvikas, children, Bombay, Balvikas, guru, and you know, in my mind I want to tell him, Swami, I also did something, but I'm just being stable and not telling him that. But he's asking me. So he asked me three times, four times, and five times I gave the same answer to the same question. And the sixth time he turned to me, he wanted to ask me again, but he was so upset that he asked the boy behind to turn the chair, and Swami, while the bhajans were going on, no arti, Swami turned the chair and went away. Then it struck to me like a thunderbolt, the whole drama is on the philosophy that you want to offer everything to God and don't take credit. And here is the master asking me, who did it? And I can't open my mouth to tell him, Swami, you did it. Then I realized one thing. I ran after Swami's chair. And luckily me, for the Indulaj Shah was sitting right next to Swami's chair going on to the car. And he was hearing all this. So he said, ha, Swami, now he has understood the real essence and the lesson of that he told. So I caught his feet, the Swami, okay, okay. You know, Swami said, now forget it, you already failed, so what are you touching my feet for? You can go away from here, <laughs> in a kind of situation. But that day it struck to me one thing, brothers and sisters. You and I can claim anything in life, but if we haven't practiced, then at the right moment, you and I will always fail. Like Karna in Mahabharata, great archer, super knowledge, but at the right time, he did not have the grace to do the right thing at the right time. And your story and my story, brothers and sisters, should not be that. That at the right time, we don't have the right answer or the right action. That what a waste it will be to spend years and years in the Sai organization and not achieving this. I would rather have you go and see a Shah Rukh Khan movie outside or a Rajni Khan movie and spend. What is the point of coming to the Sai organization, being a part of the activity and still not transforming and showing that manifestation on a day to basis? I don't want to say it openly, but you and I know. How many of us have so much ego? How many of us get upset at other people in the Sai organization? How many of us, I, you know, my worst, I want to confess as an All India President one thing. And I want to share this with Mr. Srinivasan also. By profession, I'm a lawyer. So when I joined the Sai organization, I wanted to leave my profession. But I tell you, from the time that I've become the All India President, the number of complaints I'm getting are more than the number of cases that I ever fought in my life. <laughs> this man is bad. This state president is bad. This man is not fit to be a member of the organization. This man is not good. Please remove this chap. So now I have a standard reply to all this letter. Please tell me. Are you good enough for yourself to be sitting on judgment? I want to make you the arbitrator of this case. I don't get replies back. But I wonder, why would people think in these directions when they are at the divine lotus feet? Why would they want to even think bad of somebody when Swami, whom we claim full love and affection for, imagine you love somebody but you don't want to listen to him. What kind of love is this? I don't understand. I say full faith in Bhagwan, but I don't want to follow his message. I don't understand this situation. If you say I love Bhagwan, follow him. If you say I have faith in Bhagwan, express it. If you believe that no, God is my master, become a servant. If you think God is my friend, endow the friendship with him and fulfill what he thinks is right. Is what I really wish to peace because sadhana is a very, very important dimension, brother and sister. I don't want to be, because if this foundation is not there, what is the Satisai organization? How is it different from the whole world? Because here is an organization where the motto is transforming self to transform the world. Because we must have faith that if there is righteousness in the heart, there is beauty in character. If there is beauty in character, there is harmony in the home. I want to ask every Sai devotee, have I brought peace in my family? Have I brought love in my family? Am I able to express and behave the way in my family as I am trying to behave in the Sai organization? Am I doing service in the family as I would like to do service outside? Am I respecting my parents the same way as I am trying to respect somebody else? Now imagine if I am... Today we had a lovely function in the morning where we are honoring and respecting all our elders. I come to the Sai organization and I honor all my elders in the Sai organization, but when I go home, 
I am not even bothering about what my mother is doing. What a fake it will be, isn't it? What a problem it will be. Is this, the Sayo, is this what Swami would love? No, brother and sister. Swami knows exactly what you and I do. Swami knows exactly every breath that we take and we cannot fool the master. We can fool the whole world, but we cannot fool the master. We can fool the whole world, but you can't fight with your conscience because your conscience will always win over you to tell you the truth, what you are and what you really are. And therefore, understanding the value of man is the mission of Bhagavan Shri Sattva Bhav. The Sai organization will blossom only the day when you and I get up every morning, look in the mirror and believe what Swami said, Divyatma Swarup Dulara, I am a reflection of Bhagwan, and Bhagwan is a reflection of me. I want to re-establish one fact, brothers and sisters, that the physical form of Bhagwan Shri Sat Sai Baba was a great gift to mankind. It was an inspiration. But that body and that photo is not Bhagwan. Bhagwan himself used to say, I am only a reflection of what you are. And you are a reflection of what I am. And let's understand this. There is no harm. There is, it just doesn't make sense to be devoted to a picture. Bhagavan used to say, don't make me a picture. Don't make me a statue. Remember, I don't need your pujas. I don't need your archanas. I want your transformation. I want your heart to be full of love. I want you to love the same way as I love people. And that's what I'm really asking for from all of us. Tell sisters, if this is the foundation which you and I inspire ourselves to do, then whatever work we do will always grow geometrically. People ask me, why do we need to get more members in the Sai organization? How can you get, when in my neighborhood, people know me that Nimish is like this only, how can I inspire people? They will get inspired only when they see me that, no, there is, Nimish was like this, and now he has improved like this, therefore there must be something in him for which I must listen to him. Now that's the inspiration problem, quotient that we have. Are we like that? Are we uniformly uh, reflecting the love of Swami in society? That is a situation that we need to work on and be focused upon, brothers and sisters. That's our decision. Yes, the strategy that I'd like to put before you, not only for the next two years, but for the path ahead when we celebrate the centenary of the, the Avtarhood, a hundred years celebration when we reach from seven to eight years from now. What is it that we want to do? What is it that we should do? And what is it that we should be discussing that we should do? The first thing, set our own house into order. Every district president, state president, all India president, state coordinators must understand that the whole attitude is of love and sacrifice. Let the other person win. Let the other person go. Let Swami be cherished. And I remember that Swami is with me. Imagine Bhagwan. He does everything but lets you and I enjoy the grace and the bliss of that. But he doesn't take it. So that's the foundation, first thing. Let our house be in order. Let there be no complaints. Let there be smiling faces, brothers and sisters. The Sai organization is a happy organization. Only happy people can make people happy. Sad people cannot make people happy. And society wants happiness. Society wants people who know how to be happy. Society has enough experience of people who are sad. I, I, you and I be happy people, that is the first benchmark for the centenary celebration. Let us be happy people. Let us have faith in Bhagwan. Let us accept everything with equipoise. If that is the case, then let us go and see what fundamentally the Sai organization is. I was very happy when Brother Vardhan was trying to tell me that he's increased. Yes, the goal of the next 100 years is simple. Bhajans. Every nook and corner of every district of Tamil Nadu, we want great bhajan centers to happen. And that means what? I need to train more people for bhajans. I have to sacrifice my own bhajans. I can't expect that people 10 miles away in Chennai have to come to a bhajan center which is 20 miles away. No, you come to my bhajan center, then only you are a part of the organization. No. There should be thousands of bhajan centers in every house. Let's train every community, every society how to sing bhajan. Every nook and corner there should be Sai bhajan. That is the goal and vision that we want. Balvikas, let's go all out and see that every child comes in the fold of Balvika. How to do it is a strategy that district presidents and Samiti Kaduners must take into charge. Nagar Sankirtans, let's go all out and sing. Does it make a difference? Just let's sing. Whether a dog will bark or a man will shout from top or some society guy, don't worry. Swami is there to protect us. Let's do it, there's no harm. So bhajans, Nagar Sankirtan, meditation and personal sadhana. In fact, Brother Ramani and I are planning now that every Sai worker and office bearer will have a spiritual diary like the Balvika's children who he or she will fill up every day 
and offer it at the Divine Lotus Feet once in a year. I'm going to offer an opportunity for the entire organization, even if it is bags and bags of books which come November or July, whatever you plan as the state president, will bring all the self-assessment diaries and offer it at the Divine Lotus Feet of Bhagwan, so that our commitment to Bhagwan is sustained. Self-transformation, increasing bhajan centers, increasing balvika centers, and increasing uh, study circles is a very, very important dimension that I would urge you to plan for the next centenary celebration. Service projects. You see, service I want to clarify. Service project is not doing big things. I used to always remember one quotation, whether greatness does not lie in doing one thing 100% better. Greatness lies in doing 100 things 1% better every day. That is the difference between the work that we do in the SAI organization. We are not target oriented. We are not here to change the whole world. But we want the spirit of service to be imbibed in every family. We want the service, spirit of service to be imbibed in every nook and corner of every human being in Tamil Nadu. Now imagine how many Narayan Sevas you do, you will tell me 500, 1000. But there are millions of people in Tamil Nadu. Why can't I think of a process where I will promote the concept of Narayan Seva with every family in Tamil Nadu, irrespective of the fact whether he or she or that family is a Baba devotee or not? Because feeding the poor is automatically an act of God which will inspire the person. That's the vision that we want. Take of service. Why would I want on a Sunday only for 10 people to come and do seva on a particular project. Why can't I inspire every family to do seva as a family sadhana? Go and teach one person. Go and feed some person. Go to the nearest hospital. Let 10 families go to the nearest hospital and do it. Why can't I promote this all the time in the name of Bhagwan and get it blessed by everyone? And that does not mean that I am saying don't do what you are doing. Yes, projects that we are doing at the Samiti level will do it because they have their own importance. But let us not get lost in doing big projects where we forget to do small things in life. Let us not become stage heroes by telling people, we did this, we did this, but at the home we don't do anything. Take the example of celebrating Bhagwan's birthday. I've watched in the last so many years. Bhagwan's birthday is celebrated in big events where lakhs of rupees are spent. Please spend if you have the money and if you have the will and the consensus of people, please spend, no problem. But have you ever imagined that there are two million Sai devotees in this country. And if two million Sai devotees decide that they want to celebrate Bhagwan's birthday in their own homes as they would celebrate Diwali and invite 20 new people to come around with them, their cousins, their families, their people who don't normally come, they know that this man goes to the Sai organization, but they don't participate. On that day, if there is a celebration in the home, if the houses are decorated, Bhagwan's pictures are lit up, two million into 10, how many people will celebrate Bhagwan's birthday? Have you ever imagined? And see, I spent 20 lakhs of rupees and 2,000 people will come for celebrating at one place. Do that, no harm if you have the money. But which is a greater event for Bhagwan? When Bhagwan's birthday is celebrated, Guru Purnima is celebrated in every home. Now that's the outreach that we're looking for. That's the vision that we're looking for in the next as we reach. Imagine a day five years from now, 23rd November, in this country, every Sai Bhakta, whether he's a part of the Sai organization or not, if he celebrates Bhagwan's birthday in his home or her home with 10, 15 people, they all become members of the Sai organization automatically. Imagine the vision. This is the vision I would like you to urge and think about how to spread into society, how to get into the homes of people, and how to inspire people on the message of Bhagwan Shri Satsai Baba is a very, very important situation. And yes, before I conclude and throw the open house for any questions that you may have, I definitely want to end with two things. One is a story to remind each one of us, never have the ego that you and I plan anything or execute anything. You and I are allowed to have sankalpas of good nature and prayer to Bhagwan. Every Sai office bearer must meditate and must pray. Even if you don't meditate, learn the art of silence. Let us speak less. Don't speak like me for one hour. Speak less. Don't speak at all. But keep quiet. Learn to listen to Swami from inside. Inspire people with your action. Inspire people with your behavior. Do not ever complain. The nine points of code of conduct are serious business. 
are really serious business. And out of that, one point is very clear. If ever we hear any office bearer, any member of the SAI organization complaining about anybody else, then that person has to be quarantined. We don't throw anybody out of the SAI organization, but we quarantine them so that they can correct and come back into the field. It's like a football match, show the red card, he's on the sides. The moment he calms down, come back and play. That is the reason. Therefore, I don't want to hear, throw this man out of the SAI organization. Who are you to me? Throw anybody out, I don't understand. Throw this state president out. How can I throw him out? I can't throw him out. That is the vision that we need to understand. The story that I remember very much is the story of the Vahanas of Bhagwan to know how stupid we are when we plan. The story of the Vahanas of Bhagwan you heard, and I go through it very quickly. In a great conference of all the Devas and Devtas, there was a conference hall and all the Devi Devtas came on their car, somebody in the Mercedes Benz, you know, we go in Mercedes Benz, BMW, Fiat, Ambassador, all the gods came on their Vahanas. Okay, Ganpati came on the mouse, then Vishnu comes on the Garuda, and actually, as the gods come down at the gate and they enter the conference hall, like the cars go in the car park, all the vahanas are going in the car park, in the vahana park. So everybody came and then when Garuda came, uh, when Vishnu came, the Garuda came here. And Garuda was sitting in the car park waiting for Vishnu to come out after the conference. And he looks up on the roof of the building, he sees a bird sitting there. But the next person to enter is Yamraj. So Yamraj came with his... Uh, uh, great bowl, and as he got down, he looked up and smiled at the bird. And the moment Yamraj looks up and smiles at the bird, you know what happens. But the bird didn't die. So Garuda, who's the same family, you know, my brother, my cousin, Garuda sitting there, he said, oh God, thank God, Garuda, Yamraj has looked at this bird, and the bird has not died. Let me do something. I must do something to save. Let me plan how to save this bird. So the moment Yamraj smiled and went inside, Garuda went, picked the bird, flew over seven seas and hit the bird in the forest seven seas across and came flying back and sat in the car park. After the conference got over, Yamraj comes out again and looks at the bird. He's, the bird is not there, but Yamraj doesn't get angry. Normally, Yamraj will get angry. Oh, did this, you know, kind of stuff. The Yamraj, oh, again he smiled and smiled and started leaving. So now Garuda is very confused. He says he came and looked at the bird and smiled. Now the bird is not there, still he's smiling. So he can't stay, he's the ghost flying. Sir, 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 please tell me, sir. Say, ah, then he understands, yes, Garud Maharaj, what do you want? He says, no, when you came, you looked at the bird. And